okay? You're gonna have to get up and help everybody. Because you already know how to, how to count here, so here we go. Um, well, before I came here, uh, I taught at the college in Belcourt for quite a few years, and while I was there, I took an Ojibwe language class, one semester. So I know a few words and phrases, but by no means, I'm not a fluent speaker, anything like that, but a few things I did learn was, if you know these words, help me out, make sure I'm saying them right. Uh, I did learn how to introduce myself. So I would say, Bujuanin, Mr. Faldijnikas. Does anybody know what that means? You all should know what Buju means, right? What does Buju mean? Hello. So what I'm saying is, hello, I'm introducing myself. My name is Mr. Fall, or Mr. Fall is my name. Okay, I learned how to introduce myself. And then there was one other phrase that I learned that I always remember, and you guys can use this. You should use this every day from now on. Mino gijigan noon gum. Mino gijigan noon gum. Do you know what that means? My name. That means today is a good day. Today is a good day, right? Why is today a good day? This is Wednesday, right? Halfway, we only got one more day of school left. This, and you know what? Today is a good day because you don't have to go to class today. You just get to, get to come through a few sessions, learn a bunch of cool stuff, and then move on. Today is a good day. And I also learned how to count to ten. So let's talk about the language a little bit. Um, it says the Ojibwe language is one of the healthiest languages of the Native American langu languages that exist. Now, every all the different tribes have their own language, right? They all have their own language. And you probably heard some stuff about a lot of the native languages are dying out because the elders are the ones who speak the language. And if they don't pass that on to the younger generation, when the elders are gone, then the language dies. But the Ojibwe language is different. The Ojibwe language gets passed on in a lot of schools. Now, and you know, when we talk about the Ojibwe nation, we're talking about like from Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, over into the Great Lakes, Michigan. So the Chippewa area is huge. And you can learn the Ojibwe language. Where did you learn how to count to 10? Huh? In culture club, right? In school, right? So there's a lot of schools that have the native language that they teach in it. The, the tribal colleges teach the native language. The Ojibwe language is one of the healthier languages that exist. Now, where does it come from? Uh, sorry, you got to learn some stuff. The Ojibwe, it's a verb-based language. What does verb mean? What's a verb? It's like It's a what? That's, that's a noun. That's a noun. A verb is an action. Okay? A verb. So the Ojibwe language is an action-based language. It's about doing stuff. It's a verb-based language. Now here's a word we got to break apart. Polysynthetic. Made up of two parts. Poly, synthetic. Does anybody know what that word poly means? Like, like what? Many. many, exactly. Poly means many. So like in a math class, we talk about polygons. That's a shape that has lots of sides. Or in math class, we talk about these things called polynomials. Because it's a, a math problem that has lots of pieces. Now, poly means many. What is synthetic? Anybody know what's a, what's a synthetic? Like what? Uh, no, that's, I think that's like, uh, what is it? In, in sync, yeah. So synthetic, synthetic. I think, I think my shirt's a synthetic because it's made of polyester. Oh, poly means many. My shirt's made up of many different things. It's not pure cotton, okay? Synthetic means it's, it's a man-made thing. It doesn't occur in nature. So polysynthetic means it, it's a language that's made up of many different things, okay? And I've heard, and, and what I'm talking about is, I've heard several different fluent native speakers speak the language, and from one fluent speaker to another fluent speaker, they might pronounce the same word differently. 
because it's kind of like a made up language. Not everybody says the same thing. You can pronounce, it's like pronouncing the same word two different ways. Not, well, there's not one that's right or wrong, it's just a different way to say it. And when we practice these, some of these numbers, I was learned to pronounce them a different way, and we'll get that when we get there. So, it's an action-based language. It's made up of many different things. It's kind of, like it says here, it's a relatively free word order. You can kind of do what you want to do, as long as you get your point across. Okay. Now, there's two kinds of numbers we're going to work with today. Well, we're going to work with one. Don't worry about the ones in the middle. Right here, cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. This is what we're doing today on that handout I gave you. When you talk about the exact quantity of something, that's called the cardinal numbers. I'm going to give you some cardinal numbers right now. Listen to the numbers I say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There are thirteen students in this classroom. That's an exact quantity of things. If you're counting things, those are the cardinal numbers. If you want to put them in order, that's something different. If you're going to put something in order, you don't say one, two, three, four, five. What do you say? I'm going to put you guys in order now. Ready? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It's different numbers, right? When you put things in order, those are called ordinal numbers. That's why they're called ordinal numbers. We put in order. But we're going to count. We're going to do cardinal numbers. Okay? On that sheet that I gave you. And everybody has to participate. Because if you don't participate, I'm going to make you stand up and say it by yourself. Okay? So I'm going to say one, and then everybody says what they got there. Ready? One. Beige. See, And that's one that we're going to learn different right off the bat. When I hear most of you students and even the other groups that came in, you say beige. When I was taught by another fluent speaker, I was taught to pronounce it beige. Okay? Is one right or wrong? It's just two different ways to pronounce the same thing. Beige, I say beige. Two. Nige. What, is, what does that Z-H sound make? Like, like in the wintertime when you try to start your form. Right? Okay. Three. This way. Four. Niwin. Now, another thing we're going to find out is when you say a word, which syllable do you accentuate that you put the power on? Okay? And, and, and I pronounce words different than some of the people on here. Like, when I say Niwin, I say Niwin. Like, I over-exaggerate the first syllable. Niwin. Some people say Ni win, where they put the, the, the exclamation on the second part. Ni win, ni win. Is one right or wrong? It's just how you pronounce it. <coughs> how about five? Na na, na na. Okay? Now, one through five are pretty basic. They, they just they pronounce kind of the way they look. Six is the trouble spot. And I want to hear where you guys who can count to ten, I want to hear what you're going to say. Ready? Six. Good wash way. Now, when you look at this, there's an N-I-N in front of it, right? So if you were just going to read that word, you probably would say, Ning Good Wash Way. Like four syllables, Ning Good Wash Way. Well, when it's pronounced, and I was taught the same way you were, that Nin, I didn't even know that was part of the word. When I was learned to, when I was taught to say six, it was just Good Wash Way. Start with a G, good was way. And that's the way it's going to be pronounced here. So, you know, there's a difference between how you write it and how you pronounce it. How about seven? Nish was way. Eight? Nish was way. Nine? Jean was way. That's another one that there's going to be a couple different pronunciations. I was taught to pronounce that Jean Goss way, like three syllables. Jean Goss way. We'll see what happens later on. How about ten? Medas way. So now let's listen to them and see. Let's see if we can see some differences. See, there's there's your handout right there. One, basic. Two, niche. 
three, Nguyen, four, Niwin, five, Nana. So, beige at one, right? Beige. Don't laugh at me if I say beige. Okay? That's how I it. Listen to six now. Listen to six. Six, good wash with. Seven, niche wash with. Eight, niche wash with. Nine, jam with. Ten, midas with. So, a couple things there. When I listen to the native speaker say it, it sounds like she's putting the exclamation on the last syllable quite a bit. Okay? It's like, midas way. Jungas way. The exclamation's on the second syllable, where I put the exclamation on the first one. But did you notice well, how nine was? How did she say nine? Zhang Sui. Only it was like a two syllable word. She said Zhang Sui. I was taught to say Jungas way. <coughs> Just a different way of pronouncing it. Okay? Now, flip the page. On the back page you have from 11 to 20. Now there's a misprint there. That's not 22, it's supposed to be 12. Okay. But look at all those numbers from 11 to 19. Every one of those words says Madashwe Asi. They all start with the same thing. What's Madashwe? 10. Madashwe is 10. Madashwe Ash Bejik. What's Bejik? One. One. You know how you say eleven in the Ojibwe language? You don't there's no word for eleven. They, it's ten and one. Ten and one. How do you say twelve? Midaswe Ashinij. Ten and two. Thirteen. Ten and three. Okay? It's two different parts. And that's part of that, you know, that multi-part language. It's all different things, different parts, two things put together. 10 and 1, 10 and 2, 10 and 3. Now, if you think about, if we wanted to translate a little bit with the English language, when we say our numbers that go from like 1 to 19, we always have that little part of the word teen on there, right? Like 13, 14, 15. That's kind of like saying the same thing. Except they, they say in the Ojibwe language, they start with 10 and 1. Now, if we wanted to translate English into the Ojibwe language, we're saying 11 and 12 wrong. If teen is going to be our numbers from 11 to 19, we, should be, we shouldn't be saying 11. We should be saying one teen, two teen, three teen, four teen, five teen, 16. Some of them are the same. 17, 18, 19, okay? If we wanted to make it all the same, so who's the crazy English guy that came up with 11 and 12? Where'd that come from? Should be one teen and two teen, right? That's what they are. One teen, two teen, three teen is what it's supposed to be. Now, look at 20. What's 20? Nijidana. Nij. Oh, what's Nij? Huh? Nijidana? See, you're, you're putting your exclamation on the last syllable. I put mine on the first syllable. Yeah, so what's Nij? What's Nij? Nij is two. So what do you think 20 means? Two what? Two, two tens, two tens. Two and a zero, okay? Anybody have any questions right now? Thank you for listening. Take the handout with you.